He avenged two of his three losses to Bobby Boogaloo, Watts and Willie, The Worm, Monroe and took the bitterness of the other, to Sugar Ray Leonard in his final appearance, to his grave. Between 1980, when he took the crown from Alan Minter, and the Leonard loss Mr. Hagler, whose motto was, destruct and destroy, successfully defended his title a dozen times. By far the most memorable was his 1985 brawl with Thomas, Hitman, Hearns, which lasted for only eight minutes but is considered by many to be the sport's greatest bout. I never have seen three rounds of action like that, said referee Richard Steele after the bloodied champion put Hearns on the canvas. Mr. Hagler, who was named Fighter of the Decade by Boxing Illustrated magazine, is enshrined in both the International and World Boxing Halls of Fame. While he and unbeaten heavyweight titleist Rocky Marciano were the one-two punch that put Brockton on the planetary map, Mr. Hagler was a Newark native whose family left the city after the 1967 riots. He found a second home in the gym above a hardware store that was run by brothers Pat and Goody Petronelli and made his amateur debut at 15 after lying about his age. After winning the national AAU title and compiling a 55-to-1 amateur record, Mr. Hagler turned professional in 1973. You can't eat trophies, he said. I didn't have any money and I needed to work. Ballet dancer Tony Capanzaro of the Boston Ballet left, helped Mr. Hagler and Tony Petronelli improve their balance and footwork. Globe file photo Mr. Hagler, who received $50 for his first paid bout, worked relentlessly, fighting 19 times in as many months. His breakthrough came in late 1974 when he posted a unanimous decision over Olympic champion Sugar Ray Seals, the only U.S. victor at the 1972 Games. He's a bull, Seals said after taking his first loss. I really got hurt tonight. Seals was one of the few opponents who went the distance with Mr. Hagler early in his career. Marvin already has wiped out the best in New England, observed Goody Petronelli. There's nobody left. Mr. Hagler was eager to move up in class. I belong up there with the big boys, he said. But ranked opponents avoided him. You have three strikes against you, former heavyweight champion Joe Frazier told him. You're black, you're a southpaw and you're good. Mr. Hagler concluded that he had to fight name opponents on their own turf. His first two losses came in Philadelphia, which was notorious for hometown decisions. I beat him every round, he complained after Watts won a majority decision at the Spectrum. That was terrible. I've never seen a place like this. Mr. Hagler discovered that the road to a title shot began overseas. I showed them something, he said after knocking out Argentine rival Norberto Cabrera in Monte Carlo during the summer of 1979. They can't say I'm not known outside the Northeast anymore. To the city of Brockton, Mr.